Permanently installed LED kits look awesome and they can seriously cut down on your yearly decorating time. And right now you've got more choices than ever. The question is, do they all look the same and will a $150 kit perform just as well as a $500 one? Let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which brand is the brightest and the most power efficient. Then we'll compare their apps and compatibility. After that, we'll evaluate their ease of installation and other mounting considerations. And last, we'll take a look at some side-by-side -side footage of each kit to make sure you get the exact look that you're going for. For a price of $150, the least expensive permanent LED kit that we'll be looking at is the Novastella 80 LED 100 foot RGB IC lights. The Novastella kit comes with two 50 foot strings with 40 1.5 inch LED pucks containing seven RGB LEDs each spaced 13 inches apart. And each of those 50 foot strings connects to a single power supply and controller. Novacella says their strings cannot be cut or extended, and in my testing there was no issue cutting the strings short, but extending the strings past 50 feet or 40 LEDs does not work at all, and only the first 40 LEDs will light up. The Novacella's power supply is 24 volts and 1.75 amps for a total of 42 watts of potential power delivery. And I found that on full brightness white, the 80 Novastella LED pucks drew 38.5 watts, which is over 90% of the power supply's maximum rating, which could lead to premature failure. Using my Hopacolor colorimeter, I measured the brightness and color characteristics for pure red, green, and blue, and also combined RGB white. And each Novastella puck was relatively dim at 76.8 lux for red, 107.2 lux for green, and just 23.7 lux for the blue channel for a combined brightness of 200.7 lux per LED node for full brightness RGB white. The diffuser on the Novastella lights is removable and results in significantly increased brightness, but I can't recommend using them this way since the waterproof coating is more jelly-like than epoxy-like and is really easily damaged. Next for $239 is the Apic C5103A permanent outdoor lights. The Apic lights come with six five meter strings that can be daisy chained for a maximum length of 30 meters or about 100 feet. Each five meter string of Apic lights has 12 LED nodes with a single RGB LED combined with a 30 degree lens. And each one and one eighth square node is spaced 14.5 inches apart. The Apex waterproof power supply is 24 volts and three amps for a total of 72 watts of potential power delivery. And I found that on full brightness white, the 72 Apex lights drew 53.7 watts, which is under 75% of the power supply's maximum rating, which should lead to a longer lifespan. The Apex red brightness was over three times brighter than the Novastella at 249 lux. Green was a massive 715 lux and blue was 170.8 lux for a combined RGB white brightness of 1,040. Lux, which is over five times brighter than the Novastella. After that, for a price of $299 are the Eufy E20 Permanent Outdoor RGBW Lights. Like the Epic, the Eufy kit includes six five meter strings that can be daisy chained together for a maximum length of 30 meters or about 100 feet. Each five meter string of the Eufy lights has 10 nodes, each with one RGB LED and one warm white LED behind a 30 degree lens. And each 1.5 inch rectangular node is spaced 18 inches apart. The Eufy power supply and controller are not waterproof, so you'll need to mount them inside or in a waterproof outdoor box. And the power supply is rated at 36 volts and one and a half amps for a total of 54 watts of potential power delivery. On full brightness white using the RGB chip, I measured 55.4 watts of power draw, which is a very concerning 102% of the power supply's rated power. But it's unlikely that you're ever gonna use full RGB white since the Eufy LEDs also come with a warm white chip, which at 100% brightness only drew 23 3.8 watts or around 44% of the power supply's rating. The brightness on the Eufy lights was the best yet at 560.8 lux on red, 822 lux on green, 203.5 lux on blue, and a massive 1,220 lux using the dedicated warm white LED. After that, also for $299 are the Govi 100 foot RGB IC permanent outdoor lights. The Govi kit also comes with six five meter strings, which can be daisy chained together for a maximum of 150 feet when buying the larger kit or combining kits together. Each five meter string of Govi lights has 12 LED nodes, each with a single RGB LED behind a 30 degree lens. And each of the one and one eighth inch square nodes is spaced 15 inches apart. 
The Gobi power supply is wet rated and it provides 36 volts at two amps for 72 watts of potential power delivery. On full brightness white, the Gobi LEDs drew 58 watts total, which is 80% of the power supply's maximum rating, which is about perfectly sized to ensure a long lifespan. This 80% maximum power draw is no mistake and the Govi engineers have done some creative programming to get it there. When I was measuring the brightness, the Govi nodes were the brightest by far, putting out 774.2 lux for red, 1,574 lux for green, and 294.4 lux for blue, but only 1,122 lux on full brightness RGB white, which is much lower than we would expect given the individual color brightness. I got curious, so I hooked up a non-Govi controller and I measured the brightness of the Govi LEDs, and I was able to confirm that they are capable of over twice as much white brightness at 2,478 lux, but doing so increases the power draw to over 120 watts, so Govi limits the white brightness via software. This is not only a good idea for increasing the lifespan of the power supply, but it should also prevent overheating of the LEDs, improving their lifespan dramatically as well. So good job, Govi. And after that is another Govi product, but this one is their $399 permanent outdoor lights pro. The pro version also has six five meter strings that can be daisy chained together up to 30 meters or 100 feet, but the pro version only has 10 nodes per string with 18.5 inch spacing compared to 12 nodes per string on the non-pro version. However, each one and a quarter inch square node in the pro set includes a single RGB LED in the center surrounded by three cool white LEDs and three warm white LEDs behind a 30 degree lens. The pro version's waterproof power supply is also rated higher at 36 volts and three amps for a maximum potential power delivery of 108 watts. But on full brightness RGB white, the Gobi Pro only draws 39.5 watts, and turning on the six white LEDs to full brightness draws just 47 watts, which is less than 50% of the power supply's rating, so I imagine the larger power supply is included for future upgrades and the ability to string together significantly longer than 100 feet of lights, but maybe that's coming in a future update. As for brightness, each Gobi Pro node is slightly dimmer than the standard Gobi kit, with 677.4 lux for the red channel, 1,120 lux on the green channel, and 234.7 lux on the blue channel. The Govi's RGB white brightness was just 632.8 lux, but the combined brightness of the six dedicated white LEDs was a massive 1,949 lux, making it the brightest yet when it comes to pure white. And the last and most expensive option is what I imagine most people think of when they hear permanently installed LED lighting. The yourpixelstore.com YPS Puck Track comes in 15 meter bundles with either five or 10 LED pucks per meter. Since the rest of the kits that I'm testing are 30 meters, I got two of the 15 meter bundles and I went for the 10 LED per meter variety to be able to show both densities using software. There are two big differences between the YPS puck track and the other kits in this video. The most obvious being that the circular pucks come pre-mounted in a sturdy two-part aluminum mounting channel, which not only helps with the ease of installation, but it also hides all the wires. The other big difference is that the YPS puck track doesn't come with a power supply or a controller, so you'll need to choose those for yourself. But the pucks are 12 volts, and at full brightness white, I measured 111 watts for all 30 meters of 10 puck density. So you'll need at least a 12 volt 10 amp power supply, but a 15 or 20 amp power supply would be better if you plan on using white extensively. For brightness, each puck measured 221.5 lux for the red channel, 427.5 lux for green, and 101.5 lux on the blue channel for a combined RGB white brightness of 726.5 lux, which puts it well above the diffused Nova Stella lights, but below the 30 degree lens lights from Apec, Eufy, and Govi. However, keep in mind that these brightness ratings are per LED, and if we multiply the single node ratings by the total number of nodes, it puts the YPS track in first, the standard Govi in second, and then the Govi Pro in third for total light output. Now that we know exactly what the LEDs themselves can do, let's talk about their controllers and apps, starting with the least expensive Nova Stella brand. The Nova Stella kit uses the Smart Life app for control, and it has the ability to create custom patterns by assigning different colors to 20 segments of lights. Because of the way that the Nova Stella kit is wired, the 240 LED strings will always do the same thing. And because the app only has 20 segments, that means that each segment in the app controls two lights on each 50 foot string. The Smart Life app also has a bunch of pre-programmed animations with cryptic names like Glacier Express, 
fireworks at sea and hot in the snow, but it is nice that you get a small preview of what the animation will look like before you click on it. So it's simple to browse through and find the colors that you want. There is also a limited custom animation mode and a music reactive mode. Unfortunately, I found that both music reactive options were pretty bad and were flashy and pretty seizure inducing, and I personally can't imagine ever using them at all. The Epic Light Kit also uses the Smart Life app, but the interface looks completely different from the Nova Stella. The custom pattern generator has 36 segments, which means that it also controls the lights in groups of two, but unlike the Nova Stella lights, the entire string is addressable instead of just repeating the same pattern on both strands. The Epic app also has an entire library of pre-programmed animations with hilariously translated names like Hollow Moss and Father Wiz Day but there is no preview of the patterns in the app, so you'll need to select each animation to see what it actually looks like on the lights. The custom mode on the Apex has all the same options as the Nova Stella, but it's got a little bit different look, and like the Nova Stella, I thought that the music reactive modes were pretty unusable and flashy, both using the microphone in the control unit and the phone microphone. The Govi app, on the other hand, is a bit of a masterpiece. When you first enter the app, it looks pretty simple, with a menu that lets you create custom patterns using segments of four lights, which makes things really easy and maybe exactly the look you want. But the great part about the Govi app is how deep it goes, and if you really get into it, you can make some extremely customized patterns and animations where you can individually control the color and brightness of each light in the string, and if you've got more than one Govi product, you can combine them all together in what they call dream view mode, where all the individual products will sync together to create a single pattern. The Govi music reactivity modes are also significantly better than the Smart Life options, but they still use the microphone on the actual controller. However, using that dream view mode, you can sync multiple Govi products to a Govi remote light show box that lets you put the microphone exactly where it needs to be to get the best music reactivity response. Compared to the Govi, the Eufy app is good, but not great, and definitely not as polished. There is an easy to use custom mode allowing for full individual control of each LED and basic animation controls, but I wasn't able to get the warm white LEDs to turn on using the custom option. The Eufy app also has a large library of pre-programmed animations that are useful and thoughtfully named, so it's easy to find the one that you're looking for. But the big selling point of their app is their magic show option, which is sort of like a chat GPT interface to make patterns based off of a prompt. You can press the magic dice button to have it create a pattern at random, or you can give it a description and see what it comes up with. In my testing, I had about a 25% success rate in getting it to make a pattern that was close to what I wanted, and it did better with abstract prompts than it did with actual instructions. I think if Govi really some kind of tutorial and how to talk to the AI to get it to use specific colors and patterns, it would be more useful, but I do still think that overall it's a really cool idea. The last app to talk about is for the YPS track, and it's a little bit different since the YPS track doesn't come with a controller or app, but I'm using a Quinn LED Dig Quad controller running an extremely powerful open source LED program called WLED. While it may not be as user friendly as the Govi app, WLED is absolutely the most customizable of all the controllers in this video, and it can create custom segments, spacing, offsets, custom patterns, and has a huge list of animations that can each be customized with your own color palettes and further modified using the tempo and intensity slider bars. The other big advantage to using WLED as your controller is if you ever decide to do a full-on music synchronized light show, you won't need to change any of your controllers or wiring because programs like X-Lights can stream the light show data directly to WLED over your network for millisecond precision timing. And because I feel like permanently installing LEDs on your house is a bit of a gateway drug into a full-on light show addiction, I also tested each of these permanent LED kits for WLED compatibility, and I found that the YPS Puck Track Govi Non Pro, Nova Stella, and Apic lights were completely controllable in WLED using the standard WS281X setting, and the Eufy was controllable as an SK6812 RGBW light strip, but instead of the standard RGBW pattern, it has to be set up as color order BRGW with the B and W channels swapped. And unfortunately, the only lights that didn't work in WLED were the Govi Pro lights because of their separate warm white and cool white channels, and the lights did something, just not what I wanted them to do. Next, let's talk about installation, and because I was installing six different sets on both my first and second floor, and because I wanted to be a little bit more like Colin Furs, I rented a 45-foot articulating man lift. If your house is a single story, a ladder would probably be sufficient, but remember, even though a 24-hour man lift rental will cost you somewhere between $300 and $500, it is a lot less expensive than falling off a ladder, and it makes the entire installation process much faster and less complicated. That said, some of the kits would be much easier to install on a ladder than others. 
The Epic, Govi, Govi Pro, and Eufy lights all come with 3M double-sided tape on the back. But each of those kits says that the adhesive is only meant for temporary installation and that screws and clips should be used for permanent installs. And based on my experience, I would 100% agree with that. And I would personally recommend putting a clip on each side of every node, but there's definitely not enough clips included in the package to do that. With the Epic including 80, the Eufy including 35, and the Govi kits only including 30 clips each. So you'll need about 100 additional clips for the Govi and Eufy lights and 64 extra clips for the Epic. The good news is that that double-sided tape does make it easy to put the lights up initially, and then you can come back with the clips and screws afterwards after the lights are positioned. The Novacella kit, on the other hand, comes with plastic brackets that are meant to be screwed into your soffit, and then each LED node snaps into that mounting bracket. Once it's in, the bracket is extremely stable, but getting it aligned just right to clip in can be difficult, especially if your soffits are flimsy like mine. I am not afraid of heights, but I don't think I'd personally be comfortable installing the Novastella kit on the second story roof from the top of a ladder. So a man lift rental is highly recommended if you choose this kit. The YPS channel installation is interesting because it only needs two screws per segment, but it can be difficult to hold the track and your drill over your head at the same time at the top of a ladder. So if you are planning on attempting this install from a ladder, I recommend putting some double-sided tape on the track to put it up in place while you get your screws installed. But with the main lift, I did find that it was pretty simple to keep everything in place without any tape. And that leads me into the next section, which are all the little things that I learned about installing these kits by doing it wrong the first time. When it comes to making things look uniform, professional, and tidy, the YPS channel was definitely the easiest to install and keep straight and consistent. And cutting the channels to go around corners and peaks is easily done using a pair of tin snips to cut the sides and then bending the channel until it breaks. It's obviously not as simple as going around a curve with just a wire, but it didn't take me any more time to install the YPS track than any of the other kits. And as with all LED channels, for the YPS track, I would recommend staggering the two pieces of each channel to force them to line up properly, and doing so makes the seams almost completely invisible. For the Novastella, the most important thing to getting a good look is making sure that your nodes are evenly spaced, which can easily be done by just pulling the wire taut before placing your next mount. But if you pull it a little bit too tight, it makes it impossible to snap the node into the bracket. So I had to unscrew and relocate at least a dozen brackets over the course of the install. Positioning on the Epic, Govi, and Eufy lights is even more important and a little bit complicated. Because of their 30 degree lenses and scalloped pattern that they project onto your wall, the distance between each node and the distance away from the wall, as well as the angle of the node, all need to be extremely consistent if you want a uniform look. And the more the lights overlap, the more obvious it will be when one of them is out of place. For this reason, I would definitely recommend taking a ruler or tape measure up with you to make sure that you're keeping all your distances the same. Otherwise, you might not be happy with the way your install looks for the first time it gets dark, which isn't great if you did a 24 hour man lift rental. For jumping gaps in your roof line, you've got three options. For small gaps, I found it was easy to just keep the strings intact and wrap the extra LEDs in electrical tape. And for large gaps at the end of a string, you can use the included extension cables if you're lucky enough to have a gap at the end of a string but realistically, you're probably gonna to need to cut and extend at least one of your strings. And I found that the YPS, Novastella, and Eufy Pro lights could all be cut and extended up to about 30 feet without any issues. But the Eufy, Govi, Non-Pro, and Apic kits started to have data problems after about 10 feet of extension. So now that they're all installed, let's take a look at their performance side by side. First, we've got the scalloped options. and compare those to the Novastella, 10 LED density YPS puck track, and five LED density YPS puck track.
As a veteran light show creator and a self-proclaimed LED expert, I was not expecting to be wowed by these easy to install permanent lighting kits, but I was definitely wrong. So which one should you buy? If you're looking for the scalloped wall wash look and you feel confident that you're not gonna wanna get into the full on music light show hobby, then I think that the Govee lights are the obvious and easy pick. They were the brightest, they've got the best app with the most options, and they have wet rated power supplies that are appropriately sized for long lifespan. The standard Gobi kit has 72 pixels total, which means that each of the wall wash colors will overlap with the next, while the Pro kit steps down to 60 LED nodes total, which creates a more separated look. But it has the added benefit of completely tunable white light using warm white and cool white LEDs. The Pro kit is also available in both black or white, so you can pick whichever color matches your soffit the best. For me personally though, I'm gonna be keeping the Eufy lights installed. I am a sucker for warm white light and the ability to control the lights with WLED instead of the Eufy controller is a huge plus for me since I already have a WLED controller and the wall wash look will look awesome in my light show. If you are looking to save a little bit of money, the Eufy kit is $100 less than the Gobi Pro kit and it still includes that separate warm white channel. And as I said, the Eufy app still works very well, just not as well as the Gobi app. If you're on a really tight budget, the Epic lights are around 20% less expensive than the Govee non-pro kit, and they are essentially a clone. But for something that's meant to be permanent and something that I'm potentially gonna spend an entire day installing, I feel like saving $60 is not particularly important, especially if that means that I've got a less functional app and slightly lower quality components. If you're looking for a more traditional look, the Novastella diffuser style nodes give a very festive holiday look that's very similar to old C9 bulbs. But for me with white soffits, I think that the black casing and black wiring of the Nova Stella would stick out like a sore thumb. And even if you had dark soffits, the white diffuser will give them away. And although I think that the mounting system for these lights is great, if you live in a community with a homeowners association, I could definitely see them fining you for not taking down your Nova Stella lights after December because they kind of just look like big Christmas lights. The YPS Puck Track is awesome. And it is the clear choice for anyone wanting year round lighting with the option to incorporate those lights in a full on light show. The only thing that would have made the YPS Puck Track better for me is if they had a separate warm white channel, but I still found the RGB warm white to be pretty convincing, especially when paired with other exterior lights. One thing that did surprise me in my testing was that in most cases, I preferred using the YPS Puck Track at half density, meaning only five lights per meter instead of 10. But thankfully that's easily configurable in WLED and going with the higher density gives me the most options. And I'm really excited to include both the YPS Track and the Eufy lights in this year's light show. When I took down the Eufy lights and put them back up, I also designed and 3D printed some mounts, which are much more secure and easier to use than their included clips. And I've got a link to that 3D print file along with links to all the lights in this video down in the description. And as always, I appreciate if you use those links since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons for their continued support of my channel. And this month on Patreon, I'll be giving away a set of these lights to one lucky person. And all you have to do to get in on the drawing is be in an eligible tier and post on the giveaway thread by November 1st. If this video was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.